There are some vehicles in the game that are just extremely fun. Definitely recommended to own and use in GTA. Yeah, here are my recommendations. The Sasquatch. Like, literally, you only pull this vehicle out to have fun. It has no use. I guess it's like most vehicles on this list. They have no use, but then they have the most use when it comes to fun. Because the Sasquatch, you can equip the shunt boost. It does end up costing a lot of money. You do end up spending like near to 4 million. But the Sasquatch is the rat truck and then you have to apocalypse it. You can add nitrous to the Sasquatch. I like to equip the jump and I like to equip the shunt boost. And the shunt boost coupled with that ramp at the front, it makes some cars go flying. I don't think I did a great example in this video showing how much it can make vehicles fly. But I think if you want to have repeated fun, you should definitely buy the Sasquatch. And yeah, if you do have a bit of money as well, because it's not the most useful vehicle in GTA. But if you just come on just to have fun, just to play around with your friends, then this is definitely worth it. So there's some vehicles that you can't actually buy and there's ones on the street which can add a lot to your RP experience in GTA. Now, if you get one of the packers, which are the truck, normally they have different beds on them. You used to be able to have the big goods truck where you could actually open the back of it. For some reason, Rockstar decided to remove that feature of the back of the truck opening up. I don't know why they did that. Literally no reason there was no. But anyway, at around Tuesday at 3 p.m. in GTA, you can actually, th there's loads of different spawn times, but this is one I know, Tuesday at 3 p.m. If you drive around on the highway, you'll be able to see one of these trucks that have a bed to acquire two cars. Now you can either put a pedestrian car on there along with your car or a Pegasus car. What I did is I put my own car on there and then I put the Winewood Car Club car on there, <laughs> which I know is questionable because yeah, there's don't buy GTA Plus, don't buy GTA Plus, but there's some features which I can use in videos that make it very easy for me to explain and sample to make the video a little better. But yeah, just finding the local ramp with this and then place the cars on the back and make sure, make sure please, that you're always looking at the truck. When you go and get a car to put on the back of it, make sure your character is always looking at the truck because as soon as a split second, if it's out of your camera angle, it will disappear. And yeah, I learned the hard way. Now this is a fun character hovering glitch that you've probably seen many times on my channel. And to do this a little fun glitch, you need to have a truck like a bison which you can sit in the back of. Once you have that, you do need someone to actually sit in the front of the bison in the driver's seat to actually sit in the back. So it's not solo, unfortunately. But once you sit in the back of the bison, you want to go into interaction menu, hover over action and find a suitable action. Now there's only certain actions that this works with. It works with like half the actions. Some reason it doesn't work with the other half of the actions. But then again, why am I trying to make sense of a glitch? But once you've hovered over the certain actions, for example, I'm using surrender, even though he goes to the call me one, you just press X and then triangle instantly. Now try and do it as close as possible, but press X and then triangle. And then you should come out of the bison or whatever truck you're in, and then you should hover. Now you won't be able to move around here, but the way to actually move around is aim at something or aim at someone, a pedestrian, anything. And then you can actually start moving whilst aiming. And it looks weird and funny when you sit in vehicles and you're Sometimes your head's sticking out. Sometimes, yeah, if you want to baffle your friend, do this glitch. It still works and it's pretty funny. The Arbiter GT HSW. Yeah, Arbiter GT is a good amazing. I recommend this car all the time anyway. It's actually up there, my favorite cars in GT Online. So if you care about my opinion, then yeah, I guess it's also a cool car to own. But with this car, you can near enough do it on a limited wheelie. Now, I tried to show you an example of this but you see the airfield is not so even and I keep whacking the back of it. It seems like it has unlimited power and even when you half throttle the car, when you're doing a wheelie, it still wheel spins and it keeps the front wheels up and yeah, the only issue is finding grounds where you can do that. The Arbiter GT is amazing. I can't stress it enough. It's such a cool car. I think you should purchase it either way, like even if you're not going to have fun. But yeah, with the HSW, of course, it has insane speeds and you've got that muscle car rigid feel with the soft suspension and it goes those speeds as well. Yeah, it's not a recipe for <laughs> filtering in and out of traffic because you will crash. But yeah, a fun car in general to drive. Now, drift tune vehicles are quite obvious, like try them out. If you've not tried them out, if you have tried them for a bit and then thought you're not that good at drifting, you know, carry on practicing because it does get more fun. But combining the MOC with the drift tune vehicles because you can pull the MLC out at the same time as you can propel a personal vehicle out and you can actually make your own drift obstacle 
Now I did a terrible job here of sampling that. You can literally put this MLC anywhere and you can drift under the MLC. I think all the drift cars with the right spoiler options will not connect with the attachment part of the MLC. So just remove the truck from the front and then you made a drift obstacle and you can place it anywhere. And you guys know how strong the MLC is. If you hit the truck, it doesn't move. This can just be a lot of solo fun. Now, when it comes to dropping mines in GTA, there's many cars that have the mine option. They only have certain mines that they can actually put on the car. But with the Apocalypse vehicles, you can get Kinetic Mines. And Kinetic Mines is where it's at. With the Apocalypse ZR380, you have an option of Nitrous. First of all, Nitrous is still baffling of why they've not added to regular cars in GTA. So you've got the cool option of having Nitrous and having those like wheels talk up as soon as you spray the Nitrous. It feels like I'm repeating it in videos, but the Kinetic Mines if you actually pile them on all five of kinetic mines that you can place if you place them all on top of each other the explosion becomes bigger like it is weird to say because you think how would piling five mines on each other make it bigger but it just does and it's just about enough not to blow cars up as well so then you can do this to pedestrians but the funniest part is when you do to actual players you can place five on top of each other and then watch someone go into it and they don't know what's happened a lot of people are baffled at like what this even is why they just flew they know kinetic mines exist but they don't know they're that powerful and it seems like you're modding the game now, this is more pointing towards anything with a slick mine, but I choose the Deity because the Deity is a vehicle which has so many different use cases. I think it looks amazing and if you watch my videos in the past, you've probably seen this Deity. It's the one that I love how the Deity shows off your paint. I love the long wheelbase. If you actually put low grips on it, it drifts well, it's smooth. It's classy. And yeah, with those slick mines, you can have fun with it as well. It also has guns at the front. And it's one of those cars, like the Buffalo STX, which has these weapons, but it's not screaming weaponized vehicle. It still looks cool and classy. And yeah, if you want to drift through neighborhoods and hit those gang members and then not worry about getting shot because it has temporary bulletproof glass, and you can, you can do that. If you want to drift past some enemies that will shoot you instead of shooting an RPG, you can do that. Deity is a really fun car. But this is what I always add to the list and it's so stupid because I don't use the Chernobog for its actual use. Well, I did used to do this with the Rhino tank a long time ago where I used to remove car wheels off cars. But with the Chernobog, it's so much easier and you can just call it out wherever you are. And yeah, I don't know when I've ever used this for an actual reason. This is supposed to be a weaponized vehicle to take out aircrafts that actually shoots aircrafts very far away. It's got the longest lock-on in the game and I'm here using it to remove the wheel but yeah that's the reason i want to like it because it removes wheels this chernobog does have a lot of glitches as well like you can do launch glitches with it but my favorite part of it is just removing wheels of cars <laughs> and all cars behave differently some cars have a speed glitch some cars bounce up and down when their wheels removed somehow i found the smoothest of cars but yeah normally in story mode you can only remove wheels but you can actually do it online if you add a lot of force with the chernobog or rhino tank there are so many fun cars in GTA Online and you may have an underrated one. One that I don't know of or one that is not known by the public. Please let me know what vehicle it is and why you enjoy it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did like this video, please do leave a like. See you guys in the next one.